In the previous lecture, we talked about the radiation and the radiation types. We said about the three types of the radiation, like alpha, beta, and gamma radiation. In this lecture, we're going to talk about the interaction of those radiation particles, radiative, radioactive particles, with the matter. So the radiation bad for us, for example, for humans, because uh, because of one reason. Like uh, so, in general, the uh, mechanism of uh, interaction of the radioactive particles with the human body or the materials is more or less the same. So they are going to produce the free electrons which are going to affect the DNA of our cells in a bad way. But all of the three radioactive particles are going to generate those free electrons, ionized electrons, in a different way. So let's look to, uh, in more details how they do this. So the first of all, we're going to talk about the alpha radiation. So last time we talked about the alpha radiation, which is going to contain the four atomic mass with the plus two charge. And the beta particles is, is basically essentially the electrons or the positrons. And this lecture we're going to talk about more about the electrons. So the electron is the particle with the atomic mass, which is negligibly small. So we just say that this is zero, but you should know that this is one over 2,000 roughly of the atomic Mass. So basically, with compare with the alpha particle, the the electron is eight thousand times smaller than the alpha particle, and the and the and the and the charge is negative one. Whenever it's po positive one, it, the charge is plus one. And the gamma particle basically doesn't have any mass and any charge. So basically, it's it's there's no mass. So how the positive alpha particle is going to interact with the matter. So the alpha particle basically has the two protons and two neutrons. And in general, it's a, it's a huge particle in terms of the mass and the charge, which is going to attract a lot of negatively charged electrons around this. So you, you, you should imagine that whenever the alpha particle comes into the material with a high density, with lots of atoms and it's going to interact with the electrons around around the nucleus of the atoms it's going to attract them so basically so it's going to move let's say along some paths and so as it moves along this path it's going to interact with the atoms with the electrons around um, around the nucleus of the atoms and it's going to ionize them so basically let's give off some of its so in, in general so the the alpha particles are uh, have the huge mass huge charge and at the same time initially it, it, it has the huge energy so so the energy of the alpha particles is about four to the ten mega electron volt and you know that uh, so we, we we just need a couple of uh, electron volts in order to ionize the electrons from out of its electrical electric levels um, basically it's it's going to interact with the electrons and it's going to give off some of its energy to those electrons so basically there is an atom here and some electrons around the nucleus and there is atom here as well again some electrons here so this alpha particle is going to give off some of its energy to those electrons so that the electrons are going to be ionized so the thing is like this so in in, in the beginning so let's assume that the alpha particle has the kinetic energy which is going to be 100% so the kinetic energy is 100%. So the kinetic energy is going to be in about 4 to the 10 mega electron volts. Let's assume that initially it has 100% of kinetic energy. We know that the kinetic energy is proportional to the square of the speed of the particle, right? Basically, kinetic energy is higher, the speed is higher. So as it gives off some of its energy to the electrons, so that the electrons are going to be ionized, it's going to lose its speed. 
So um, I just like to say here that in the beginning, when it has like a high energy, it's moved really fast. And uh, there is no really time to interact with lots of electrons. So it's going to interact with some electrons, but not so many. But as it loses the energy, as it moves along this curve, as it, uh, it becomes more, it, it, it's going to lose the energy and it becomes more slower so that it's going to interact with more and more electrons. It's going to uh, like ionize more electrons as it loses the energy. So which, which looks like, which sounds strange, right? So you, you need to imagine this. So the example was, let's assume was a, was a train, for example. I've got a train. Which is moving with some uh, like uh, with some speed, let's say, uh, with some velocity, and um, uh, so there are people along the path of the train uh, who would like to come into the train. So if the train moves really fast, so the the people it will be difficult for people to get to to be able to get into the train, right? So uh, along this path, the velocity of the train is becoming slower. For example, here the velocity is going to be 20% uh, of the initial one. So let's say 0 0.2 of the initial velocity. So it means that people have more chance and more time to get into the train. So more people are able to get in to the train. Which is the similar, so which fits there's a similar idea with the with the alpha particle. So basically, alpha particle initially have some kinetic energy. Let's assume that this 100%. So as it moves along this path, it's going to lose its kinetic energy. It becomes like a slower. It moves slower so that more electrons are going to interact with this alpha particle. And it's going to ionize more electrons as it loses the energy. So we so quantitatively we can explain this using the graph, which is called the Brox peak. It basically uh, says us how many electrons are going to be ionized as the alpha particle goes deeper into the material. So let's say this graph, let's say, and the x-axis is going to be at the, uh, the deep of the deep of the penetration. And the y-axis is going to mean how much electrons uh, it's, it's going to ionize. So at the beginning, before it, it starts, like it, it comes into the material, it hits the material, there's no dips, right? So it's going to uh, ionize some number of the electrons, but as it goes inside the material, it's going to lose its energy. It's going to ionize more and more electrons, but at some point it's going to lose all of its energy. There will be no kinetic energy of the alpha particle, so it's going to just go down. So this graph is called the Brox peak. Brox peak. So this is essentially what you should know about the interaction of the particle with the matter. So basically, it's going to uh, like ionize lots of electrons, and it's going to do this because of it's like um, it's giving off some so, so some energy to the electrons, uh, and the electrons are going to be ionized. So we, we we are going to talk about how actually the electrons are going to to the, the second types of the radiation as the like uh, the beta particle, basically the electron, how it's going to uh, like ionize the the electron. So essentially, the beta particle has really small mass. We, we just neglect this and say that this is zero. If this is electron and it's going to basically come in to the material. So 
I need to draw here lots of particles in order to explain what's going to what's going on. So the electron is not going to move in one line as it, as it was for the alpha particle. So it's going to interact with lots of electrons of the atoms. So basically, it comes into the highly dense material and it's going to bounce off many of the electrons and it's going to move like a zigzag. So the colors here, so I, I drew a lot of colors here, different colors. The, the, so the, all of these uh, circles are the electrons. Depending on the color, we're going to talk. So, so, so the, the, the white one, let's say, they are going to be the ionized electrons. And the red ones are going to be the excited. excited electrons. What does it mean? So basically, so let's assume that inside the matter I've got an atom with a nucleus and electrons around the nuclei and I've got a better particle which is going to interact with the matter, right? So I've got an electron with the mass zero with the charge minus one now it's going to interact with the electrons. So basically, it's going to hit with, the, with this electron, hit with this one, then hit with this one, and so on. So it's going to hit that one, bounce out, bounce out, and hit with the, another one, and so on. So sometimes it has enough energy uh, to ionize the electron. Uh, for example, especially whenever it interacts with the electrons in the high energy levels. But sometimes the energy of the electron is not enough to ionize the electron so that it's going to excite this. So we talk about the excited state when we talk about the lasers, right? So they're basically the, so the, the energy which is given to, the, to, this, the, to this electron is exactly equal to the difference between the energy levels so that this electron is not going to be ionized. It's going to just jump out to the second layer, to the next layer. So this is what I have tried to explain in this graph, right? So uh, the electron is going to come into the matter and it's going to move as a zigzag. It's going to bounce through the electrons and sometimes it's going to ionize some electrons and sometimes it's going to excite some of the electrons. And the third type of the radiation, it's a gamma radiation. So we talk actually about like, mostly talk about the, uh, the, the interaction of the gamma radiation with the matter when we talk about the X-rays. So there are three types of the interaction absorption processes like a photoelectric effect, the Compton effect, and the peer production. So if you remember, the Compton effect basically means that the, so the gamma um, radiation is very similar to the X-rays, right? Because the X-ray in a gamma particle, so the gamma uh, ray, um, it's, it's both photons. So the gamma and x-rays are photons. So basically the photon is moving and it's going to head with the electron and the electron is going to bounce out to here, it's going to be ionized and uh, the photon is, is going to move here with the rest of its energy. So this process is called the Compton effect. So we, uh, we so if there, there, is, there is a gamma, um, gamma radiation particle, so which is going to have really high energy, and uh, so it's, it's going to interact with the matter in this way. So the gamma particle is going to come inside to the matter. So it's going to come inside to the matter. So let me draw with this, with the blue one. It's going to interact with an electron. So the gamma particle comes into the material. 
it's going to interact with an electron so that it's going to be ionized. So that after the electron is ionized, so it's, it's, it, it finds itself in a highly dense material. It's going to like move again as a zigzag and it's going to ionize some of the particles and excite some of the particles. Right, so it's, it's going to be the same process as we have described for the beta particles, right? That's going to ionize some of the particles and some of the particles are going to be basically excited. So after this electron, which is ionized because of the gamma radiation, is going to interact with lots of electrons. It's going to move as a zigzag. Some of the electrons are going to be ionized. Some of them are going to be excited. So for the gamma radiation, so we usually call this process as a secondary radiation. Secondary. Radiation. So we've seen that in general, so the, all of the three radiation types interact with the matter in the same way, like in the, the, the side effect. The bad thing is that it produces the free ionized electrons, which are going to affect the DNA of the cells, right? But they are going to do this differently. And the amount of the electrons, ionized electrons, also actually depends on the types of the radiation, it appears. So we're going to talk, so you need to be familiar with the two more things. One is called the penetrability. Penetrability. So the penetrability means basically how depth um, the particles can, uh, can come into the matter. So, so whenever we talk about the penetrability, you should know just basically two things. One is basically, so, so you just need to know whether the, uh, the particles are high penetrability, so, so penetrable or low penetrable. So we, we know that the alpha particle, for example, have a huge mass was compared with a photon and the electron. And obviously it's going to be difficult to, for the alpha particle to move along inside the material. So basically the alpha particles have low penetrability while the beta particle and the gamma particle have the high, higher penetrability. So basically this is what you just need, need to know. So the alpha particle have lower penetrability was compared with the beta particle and the gamma particle. And the main reason is that the alpha particle have higher mass, the huge mass. And the alpha particle have a lot of charge. For example, it was compared to the electron. It has twice more charge than the electron. So it's going to attract lots of electrons and it's going to move really slow, not, not so far away inside the material. And the, another thing which you have to be familiar with is called the LAT or LAT, which is like a linear energy transfer. So basically what does it mean? And uh, it's, it's like how much the particles are able to give off the energy to, the, to its surrounding, how much? So obviously the alpha particles, which has a huge energy uh, was, was compared to the electron and the gamma photons, it's going to give off a lot of energy. So it, in, in this case, we, we usually say that the uh, LAT, the linear energy transfer for the, uh, um, for the alpha, uh, alpha particle is much more higher than for the beta particle or for the gamma particle. So the linear energy transfer basically means how much the energy can be given off to the surrounding of those radioactive particles. So this was just a summary of, so this was just the, like, uh, the lecture about, so let's make a summary. So we talk about the interaction of the radioactive particles with the meta for the three types of the radioactive uh, the particles, for the gamma particles, for the beta particles, and for the alpha particles.